What makes you want to shout? You don't have to answer the questions here. I'm just going to ask a few here. What makes you feel so angry you get overheated? What makes you want to sing? What really gets under your skin? What makes you feel like jumping up and down? What makes you laugh out loud? And when you do these things, who does it irritate the snot out of? I've got the wrong sermon here. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about family. I, I just I printed up July 14th sermon. So we're going to wing it today. Jesus and family. Well, family can irritate the snot out of us, can't they? They really can. I, I saw some, like, unspoken language there when I was asking the questions. Who, uh, who irritates? No, we're, we're not even going to ask. So Jesus was preaching. He was doing all the Jesus things, and he said some stuff that's a little confusing. And when he was saying this stuff, his mother and his brothers and sisters came to try to say, hey, what are, what are you doing, Jesus? Come, come with us. We think that something is affecting you. And then Jesus dissed his whole family. So what makes a family? You and your family define your family. But the Bible says, well, there isn't a particular word that definitely means the same thing as when we say family, but household is close. Household is an economic unit. It involves parents and children and servants and grandparents and anyone else who lives in the household even for a temporary time. So family is all of that. But the government says family is an economic unit. It involves people living in the household, parents, grandparents, children, grown children, sometimes grown children for a long, long time, sometimes grown children for a short period of time. You and your family define your family. There are ways that over history we've said that, you know, anyone do the 23andMe DNA tests? Come on, who's done it? Anyone here? The 23andMe, and it says, well, back historically, this person is related to you and this person related to you, and I did not know that that person was related to me, and how does that work? And oh my goodness, I don't think that I want to look at this anymore to find out all the stuff that's in my history. That's not really our family, but it is our ancestors. Our family is the family that we choose. Sometimes we don't get along with the people who we grew up with who were our family. And then someone says, but family is the most important thing. And of course, family is very important. But who we interact with and who we show love for throughout our lives does change somewhat. We do have the people that we grew up with and we hold special attachment there but sometimes we don't hang out for a long period of time. My sister lives in Sandwich, Illinois. I have nieces and nephews. Every week on Thursday, my nieces and nephews, my sister and the whole family, including my parents, get together for a Zoom call. We started doing it in April of 2020 when my sister and I were trying to teach my parents how to use Zoom because we knew that we weren't going to be able to be together for a little while. And we said, we should, let's do this more often. And so right away, I said, all right, let's do it. Let's do it on Thursdays at 6 o'clock Central Time, but let's make sure that it's only an hour, because if we do it for longer than that, we're going to get tired of it really quickly. We have not missed a family Zoom call since April of 2020, four-plus years. Now, Sometimes the group is large, sometimes the group is small, and I haven't been able to make all of them. 
but we have had a family Zoom call for four years plus, and we still get to visit now. That family, we may not see each other in person very often. I don't go to Sandwich, Illinois very often. Anybody go to Sandwich, Illinois very often? Come on. The Sandwich Fair is there in September, and it's, it's right around Labor Day, and it is a fun event to go to. And when I was a pastor in Salmonock, Illinois, I used to go to the Sandwich Fair and enjoyed it very much, but I don't go there so much anymore. I go to things in Justice and in Palos Park and in Palos Heights and in Tinley Park and in Orland Park and Orland Hills and Frankfurt where I have new family. Family from church. Family from the place where I live now. Family and friends. Family that I haven't even met yet. What do you do when you just can't get along with family? It's a hard one. I've had times in my life where it was difficult to get along with some parts of the family. But instead of just arguing and yelling and screaming, which I know family can do, I didn't say something like, who are my mother and brothers and sisters? All those who do the will of God are my brothers and sisters. I didn't say that one. And I think Jesus was being a little bit unnecessarily mean to his biological family at that time. Family is who we define it is. Family is who we surround ourselves with. Family is where we make attachments and where we are safe. Sometimes we have people who we would call part of the family who aren't any of that. And still, we can show love and respect for one another. There's some other parts in this Bible reading that are difficult to grasp. The one about family is one where I said, I don't think Jesus, I think Jesus was unnecessarily a little harsh about that there. And maybe he was caught up in the moment. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. Have you ever heard this used in congregational meetings when people don't agree on something like how we should do stuff with the lights or how we should do this or that or what kind of carpet we should have and there are disagreements and someone, it didn't happen here, of course, but I've heard it in congregations. If a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. Well, congregations get to have meetings and get to disagree on things and get to figure it out. The whole Bible comes to us from a big meeting, several meetings, by the way, of Bible scholars, of Scripture scholars, who got together and argued about what book should be included in the sacred texts and what shouldn't. And some books didn't make it. And some people were upset after that. And some people were upset that certain books were included even up until and including Martin Luther, who hated the book of Hebrews. He was like, it should not be in the Bible. He didn't vote on anything there, but he thought it shouldn't be in the Bible. So to this day, our sacred text is the subject of some controversy because people don't always agree on what's in it or even what it says. A house divided against itself cannot stand. When we decide to have conversations, when we decide to vote on things and not everyone agrees, it's okay. That's not a house divided. A house divided would be when someone says, I want to follow love. No, I want to follow hate or disdain. That's divided. The church is founded on love. Peace Memorial Church is founded on Christ's love. So we are not a house divided even when we disagree on things. If Satan had risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. Well, same thing. If, if the adversary who was for evil decided that they wanted to be for love, they could not stand against themselves. But there's more here today. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven of their sins. Okay, we could stop right there, but he says more. Whatever blasphemes the utter, they, whatever Whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. I've heard this one before. Usually it's brought up in the context of, 
I don't agree with what you're saying, and therefore you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and you cannot be forgiven. It doesn't mean that. That is humankind making up rules that says that God's grace is limited. Jesus did say that, and I'm not sure who exactly he was talking to there, but it is not to be used as a weapon. If you disagree with someone's theology or politics or views on social issues or wedge issues, bringing up the you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit is not the thing to do. What is the thing to do when we have disagreements about important issues in or outside of the family? I'm pausing, but not for you to say it out loud. You can think it. We have discussions. We find a basis for common ground and try to find a way through. And sometimes we can't, but at least we look to find common ground in family, in congregations. We've got an election season right now, and I don't know if it's possible to find common ground, but it doesn't mean that we are free from trying. We have so many terrible things going on in the world, and I don't know if it's possible for us to find common ground, but it doesn't mean that we don't keep trying. Did Jesus have an unclean spirit? No. Did Jesus work for love? Yes. Is our job as the church, or just regardless of whether we're part of a church or not, as humankind, to live out love and respect and dignity for all? Absolutely. That is is the path. Sometimes people ask me, they say, I want to get closer to God. How do I do that? Love is the path. That doesn't make any sense, but it, but it does. God is love. Love is the path. But what about all the theology? What about all the rules? What about all the stuff that you preach about? What about this? What about that? What about blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Love is the path. If we follow the path of love, everything else kind of takes care of itself. And I know what I'm saying is far too simple. That when we live out love, still people are going to act terribly toward us, and we may act terribly toward other people. That's because we make mistakes. When we live the path of love, it does start to work out. So for Micah, for the whole Cook family gathered, for the congregation gathered here, for the choir, for the musicians, for everyone out in the narthex. Did they look up when they said it? Come on, look up. Hey there. Love is the path. What is the path? I, I really want to hear it this time, and I know I don't ask you to say things out loud very often. What is the path? Are you sure? What is the path? How are we going to live out love? You don't have to say that part there, but we are going to work on it. We went through a season of visioning, and now the trustees and a few other people are going to gather the stuff that we wrote down on the note cards and try to come up with some statements that represent the, God's vision for Peace Memorial Church. And then later this summer, will present it to the congregation as a possibility and the congregation can discuss and maybe disagree, not as a house divided, but as a house that is trying to work together toward love. You can bet that part of the statement, part of the vision statement for Peace Memorial Church will include love because love is the key. Oh, good one. But I said path before, so let's, let's say it three times as loud as we can. Love is the path. Ready? One, two, three. Love is the path. Again, love is the path. One more time. Love is the path. Amen.